and truth, and like a lot of kids, they, you know, want to fly like a bird. There's a timelessness to it. Father Goose is a 54-year-old Canadian sculptor named Bill Lishman, a man who believed that using an ultralight aircraft, he could somehow lead in flight an actual migration of geese south out of Canada. There is a point to his flight of fancy, because the techniques he dreamed up could be used to help restore some endangered birds to migration patterns they have long since forgotten. But if birds can learn to fly behind a human leader who will show them a safe migratory route, the hope is they will remember the way on their own, and they, in turn, will show new generations. It's amazing. They've got some method of learning the ground as, as they go over. I thought, boy, we could carry that into another realm, and, and that's where we're at now. He's persistent, and it really is, you know, he can see an end in sight. In Lishman's way. wife, Paula, knew that once he was hooked on the romance of the idea, he wouldn't give it up. It's going back to the real primal drive of looking at a bird in flight and, you know, being able to experience that firsthand. You're high, you're high, go around. But what audacity to think you could join a masterpiece of nature and share even a wing stroke of its world. They always go long. Who is this man? Well, he lives on Purple Hill in the Canadian countryside north of Lake Ontario. His house, which he designed himself, is built into the hillside and filled with his ideas and inventions, including this pop-up refrigerator. Around the outskirts of his property, you find evidence of how Bill Lishman earns his living as a sculptor of metals in particular, whose work has been displayed and sold worldwide. You go through the whole list of his accomplishments, things he's done, the underground house, the sculpture. You go through the whole list and people start to go, well, this, this is an unusual guy, you know. Joe Duff is a photographer and ultralight pilot who joined up with Lishman's migration project to fly the second aircraft that's necessary to keep the geese herded together. He needed the help, and I wanted to help, so I put everything on the back burner and, and do this full time. Recruiting a free spirit like Joe Duff is one thing, but what made his geese so attached to Bill Lishman? It began the moment these young goslings hatched from eggs collected under Canadian wildlife permits and placed in an incubator. Because of a natural phenomenon called imprinting, birds believe the first moving object they see is their parent. So as they peck their way out of the egg and open their eyes in the nursery, there's Bill Lishman. To them, he's Father Goose. Like any proud parent, he's taken hours of home video. What's amazing to me is how much they're, they are born with. You know, they have the instinct to fly. They know how to fly. So it, it, it's obviously, uh, you know, millions and millions of years of evolution in there that uh, comes through in the egg. From his first group of goslings in 1986, Lishman, often with his daughter Carmen by his side, has raised three generations like a father, running down Purple Hill, carrying a tape recorder that accustoms the geese very early in life to the sound of an ultralight engine. A lot of the family got involved. Carmen had five geese, but she'd run around with these little goslings following after her. And uh, it, the amount of dedication is quite amazing. Just the hours and hours that are spent every day. No one had ever prepared geese to migrate behind a man-made flying machine before. And so Lishman was on his own as an experiment. But that was nothing new. Lishman didn't know how to fly when he started out either. Not even a hang glider. Much less something with an engine. Bill Lishman is not a conventional man, but he is a stubborn one. And finally, everything falls into place. At around 10 weeks of age, the geese are ready to use their wings. They pursue the ultralight as it takes to the air, and in a matter of seconds, they have soared into formation behind it. The most important solution was here, 400 miles to the south at Early Center, Virginia. Here, a scientist named William Sladen, who keeps a sanctuary for trumpeter swans, issued an invitation to Lishman and his geese. There's plenty of room and good care, if you can really make it. If this works, then 
We can use it on rare birds like the trumpet swan and particularly uh, the whooping crane, which is very endangered, and show them a safe migration route that they don't have to do by chance. A month into autumn on a 39 degree morning at 6 a.m. It is Wednesday, October 19, 1993. With a light wind stirring from the north-northeast and the sound of the ultralights drifting across the fields, the weather was right and the young Canada geese were ready. And finally, this strange collaboration of instinct and engine answered the ancient call to go south. The first day was the one that Lishman worried about most, the day they would encounter 36 miles of open water over Lake Ontario. The most difficult part in my head right now is getting across Lake Ontario because we have to fly about three hours and uh, we were concerned that the geese wouldn't last that long to start with and there's always that nagging doubt that the engine might quit on you. And then they began a series of hops that took them through New York to near Williamsport and Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, where they rested on Monday, October 25th. You're flying over the planet with these creatures, and it sort of paints the Earth over, cruising along with these beings that have been flying across this planet for millions of years. It's just an absolute phenomenal feeling. More than 400 miles they had flown at average speeds of 30 to 32 miles an hour and altitudes as high as 3,700 feet above sea level. 18 geese, magnificent to watch. As Lishman flew beside them, wingtip to fingertip, he could even watch them breathe. But the great secret that Bill Lishman could not share, the secret that they and all birds keep, is how they remember the way. When you land in Virginia, it's going to be like Lindbergh uh, making it to well, to, me it will be, to me, it will be. I, I, I don't think we'll have the crowds and everything else, but uh, it, it'll be my personal Lindbergh flight for sure. At sunset on October 25, 1993, that long journey ended. From the ground, we could count as they approached and circled. One, two, three all the way up to 18. They were all coming in. As soon as they landed, tired from the day's flight, they were taken to the pen that had been prepared for them. Everyone there that evening followed Bill Lishman. The geese will winter here, and then the test will come. Will they return to Purple Hill without Father Goose? Will they remember this flight? As for Bill Lishman and Joe Duff, when it was all done and everyone was gone, we saw them flying alone in the darkening sky, climbing and circling and climbing again as if they couldn't quite let it all go. They will remember. A scientist at Airlie Center, Virginia, Dr. Bill Sladen, had offered his bird sanctuary as a destination for Lishman's geese. And they flew for six days over the cold waters of Lake Ontario, above the changing autumn foliage of New York and Pennsylvania. And what a day it was, October 25th, 1993, when they landed at their winter home.
Bushmen planned to return in the spring to lead them back, and that's where we left them. But guess what? On a spring morning in April, they simply disappeared. We didn't know where they were, and uh, we didn't know whether they were headed home or whether they were just uh, gone off with other geese. That was bad news, until two weeks later, when Bill Lishman looked out just before sundown and saw the answer to his question. They were home. When we found they were home, boy, that was marvelous. It, it really worked. It was the crowning thing. For the sake of the experiment, uh, that meant we only have to fly birds one way, and obviously they learn it. Twelve of the 15 geese that had survived the winter at Airlie Center returned, positively identified by the wildlife bands placed on their necks. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. They're free birds. They were free, but they went straight back to their old pond on Purple Hill. As for Father Goose, he's already making plans to try to lead a future migration of sandhill cranes but not before he takes one more flight of geese to Virginia. So even as we went yesterday to see the returning veterans, we saw as well the beginnings of a new cycle of life and another journey. It's a long way to walk to Virginia. You'll have to learn to fly.